The definition of exfoliate is a mechanical or chemical agent that is applied to the skin to remove dead cells from the surface. <sighs> I couldn't quite get it together to post this video on Thursday night because there's so much information I wanted to share that what I did is I split this video into two. Welcome to part one of... What is chemical exfoliation? It's basically slothing off dead skin cells with a chemical agent. A lot of these chemical agents are called keratinolytics. Last week we talked about the four layers of the epidermis. Today we're going to be talking about the very top layer which is the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is composed of keratinocytes. Did somebody say horny? but they're dead. Which is part of the reason we want to sloth them off. Now, there's about 25 to 30 rows or layers of dead keratinocytes just hanging out on your face. There are several types of chemical exfoliants, but what I'm going to focus on are... That's right, AHAs. What you ask is an AHA? Well, it's a group of ingredients known as alpha hydroxy acids. Organic carboxylic acids, in which there's a hydroxy group at the 2 or alpha position of the carbon chain. Yeah. It's a little bit much for me too. Some of the AHAs we're gonna talk about, and that's actually gonna be next week's video. It's just gonna be devoted to the specific AHAs. It's gonna be devoted to where they come from, their chemical properties, and how they function in cosmetics and beauty products. So tune in for that next week. Some of the ones I wanna just mention right off the bat are acetic acid, tartric acid. To really understand how AHAs work, we gotta go back, way back to the 90s. 1990s. I was going to say 1900s. <laughs> so we're back to the 1990s. And back in the 1990s was when they really came on the scene and people started taking notice that their use produced younger looking skin. And we all kind of want to look younger, don't we? And we all kind of want to get rid of like this. Fine lines, wrinkles, age spots. If you were to research AHAs, were conducted in the 90s. However, I did find a study from the 2000s, the early 2000s, as well as 2014, and you know what they all say about the way that AHAs work? Yeah. So the mechanism of action is still not quite understood. However, the study that I found from 2014 actually did a really good job, in my opinion, of explaining Here's an interesting side note. Here's a product being used in beauty products and cosmetics products. And yet still to this day, with all of our sped up, high fast technological world, they still don't know exactly how they work. And the FDA is still investigating their safety. Personally, I think there's enough research that AHAs are safe, but doesn't that just go to tell you something about beauty products in general? Just stop and think about that for a minute. Every time you're being told something about a beauty product or a chemical, take a question in your mind because a lot of things, they still don't really know. But I digress. Let's get back to AHAs. All right, now here is the most widely accepted theory. Now, here are our dead keratinocytes. However, in between these cells is a lipid-rich secretion that keeps our skin waterproof and keeps these um, cells bonded together. Now, the most widely accepted theory is that when you layer AHAs on your skin, that they come in and pull calcium out of these cell adhesions causing the bonds to break 
and thereby releasing the keratinocytes and letting them just uh, basically fall off the face. They do this through a process called chelation. Essentially, calcium ions are considered metal ions. AHAs are an organic compound and that's what allows them to pull the calcium out. I know, it's crazy, but it's the most widely accepted theory. So for this next part, we're gonna take it back to a good old book, and we're gonna talk about some of the benefits of AHAs. The benefits attributed to AHAs include a reduction of fine lines, superficial wrinkles, a lightening of surface pigmentation, and softer, suppler skin with improved hydration. Let's talk about some of the risk factors of using AHAs can be skin irritation. Two, increased sun sensitivity. Yes, even though we view this dead skin as problematic, it's actually there for a reason. And part of that reason is to protect us. One of the things it protects us from is... So one of the things they say about using AHAs is you have to be very diligent about sunscreen and sun exposure. All right, guys, that was a super quick overview. I'm going to see you next week. We're going to break down AHAs in more detail. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this video and I'll see you next time.